that is right there, or was. Yes, that's George Washington. Anyone know who that is, or was? Close, Kennedy. Guy died on the same day. That's C.S. Lewis. He died on the same day John, uh, John F. Kennedy died. That's why he didn't get any real press, that Lewis had died because Kennedy died that same day. Anyone know who that is, or was? That's Mother Teresa. That's Randy Yarber. Great friend uh, Randy Yarber passed away about a week ago. Randy dialed in on you and was concerned about people, which as we'll see here, that's really the only thing we ought to be concerned about other than God is people at the end of the day because only God and people are going to survive this world. Move further into what Randy did and talk about it from a macro perspective, what should we be doing? And look at what Christ told us to do here on this life so we could be a disciple like Randy was. Who's that? That's you. That's everybody in this room. Now you've probably heard this put this way before. That dash right there enabled life to continue. It enabled life to continue for everybody who put trust in Christ. The question, though, is for us today, what are we going to do with your dash, or what are you going to do with your dash? Because that's really all we get here on earth is that dash. What are we doing with it? By way of review, we've covered this before. What is the purpose of life? Why are we here? Right, yes. What is eternal life? Jesus said it in John 17, 3. He said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. They may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom they know. When he say no, he just, uh, just uh, doesn't mean intellectually. He means volitionally that you trust in Christ. You don't just acknowledge that God exists, but you trust in him and live according to his commands, as he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Paul said the same thing in another way. He said, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Everything else is rubbish compared to knowing Christ. And of course, we have to make him known because he put us on this earth to be ambassadors. We're ambassadors for Christ. He said in his last words before he ascended to heaven, go therefore make disciples of all nations. He didn't say make believers. He said make disciples. So that's really what we're here to do. So the question is, what are we going to do with, with our dashes? What are you going to do with your dash? Two things, it seems to me, to know God and make him known. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Everything else is a, is a means to an end. The end is to know God and make him known. Everything else is a means to that end. So the question is, are our lives tied up in the right things? Or are we pursuing means rather than ends? I guess the question we ought to ask is, how can you make God known? And maybe this question is too forward to ask for a big group like this. I don't know if anyone wants to volunteer. But if someone were to walk up to you and you had to answer this question, how would you answer it? If they said, what are you, gonna, what are you doing with your dash? What are you doing with your life? What would you say? I'm not talking vocationally here. We all have to make a living. We know that. But if somebody were to put you on the spot and say, what are you doing with your dash? What would you say? Love, the neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah, the one greatest command. And as we said before, as Augustine put it, love God and do as you please. The implication is what? If you love God, then you will follow his way, not your own. You'll deny yourself. You'll, you'll carry your cross. Well, what does that mean? Putting others before ourselves, our family, our children, okay. people that need help. Um, just trying to let people, I mean, tell people about Jesus, but do it more so out of my actions than just saying empty words. Okay, put others before yourself. That's what Randy did quite a bit. As somebody just testified. That's what he always did. He was always putting other people before himself. Graham, you were going to say something? I was going to say, you know, being really honest, my dash is I'm trying to enjoy life. Uh -huh. But I found that 
the only true way to really enjoy life is in God's purpose and plan and provision and protection. We are to enjoy life. And we find out that true enjoyment or true joy or happiness comes when you are pursuing God. In fact, in 2 Timothy 6, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 6, I think it is, Paul says that God gives you richly all things to enjoy, but he also says share with others. So any good thing comes from God. What are we using our things for? What is the goal of our lives? I mean, if you had to stop right now and say, am I on the right track? I know I'm not perfect. Nobody's claiming to be perfect here. But are you on the right track? Are you pursuing God? And are you trying to bring others to know him as well? That's the question. Let's take a look at how Jesus put this. The Sermon on the Mount has been called the greatest sermon ever.